Yellowstone's getting pretty hot, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know that the media does an incredible job of bringing out an article with a very fascinating, frightening title. And then once you start to read the article, it's like, oh, but it's really no big deal because scientists say everything's going to be just fine. Well, as you can see, I've pulled up the amount of earthquakes that have happened around Yellowstone over the past 90 days, and we're looking at 1,933 earthquakes in the region. And what I also find fascinating is some of these have been pretty decent on the Richter scale when you think about previous cataclysms linked to earthquakes and volcanoes when the trigger around the nexus point. So 90 days, 1,900 earthquakes plus. You're like, well, that's no big deal because there's between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes every single year on average in Yellowstone, right? Well, what I did was I pulled up charts that go all the way back to 94. Now, in 1994, you can see in Yellowstone region, 796, 786 earthquakes. That's the year of 94. So not a whole lot. You know, you can see there's some clusters there, some little spasms around the October, August, and May time frame, but only 786 earthquakes. Now, in 95, it doubles almost. Not quite, but it bumps up to 1,481. So we'll say about 1,500 earthquakes. You can see there's a, a pretty big spike at the end of July, or around mid-July, I should say, and a little one in December. Then we go to 96, 1,236 earthquakes. Once again, you see a spike around November, late October time. 97 comes around, 1,366, 98, 1,440. Then, in 99, it jumps up to 3,133 earthquakes. So, pretty good-sized year, 99, you know, right before 2000. In the year 2000. Well, look at the spikes you see in, I don't know, late June, early July. I'd say more late June time frame. And then, late August. Huge spike in August. Okay, so, now are we seeing a pattern? Well, August, it seems like some years there's a spike, then other times it seems like it's October and sometimes December, but you do notice these clusters. So we get to the year 2000, you've got 1,895 earthquakes, then in 2001, you've got 2,023, 2002, 2278, 2003, then it jumps, I'm sorry, then it actually goes back down to a little over 1,000 earthquakes. So it cuts in half, 1,031 in 2002. You know, then it bumps up to 1249. Then in 2005, it goes all the way down to 848 earthquakes. Point being here, then 1200, then 938 in 2007. Then it doubles, 2200, 1582. Then in the year 2010, you see it go back up to 3250. Now, what's interesting is you've got this huge spike in February. We're a ton of activity in February, and the rest of the year, it's totally dormant, it's totally, not dormant, but it's pretty mellow. So going through this, what I notice even in 2011, then it goes all the way down to 670. But you'll notice the most intense year that it's showing, it's a little over 3,200 earthquakes. Well, right now, just over the past 90 days, we've hit 1,933 earthquakes. Now, what's interesting is we pull this back a year, Let's start 365 days ago. It's not a huge deal. We're at 2,600 plus, 2,681. You got to remember, though, we're still four months left, and the activity has heated up because for the first part of the year, the majority of the year, it's no big deal. You can see here, you go to the first 140 days, there's not a whole lot of activity going on. First half of the year, approximately. There's very little activity, totally normal. Then starts to pick up a little bit, you know, four months ago, a little bit, but really over the past 90 days, you're seeing this huge jump. And some of the magnitudes have been decent. 
There's been a few that have been somewhat substantial that a lot of people felt. You know, we're going to past 77 days, 1900. Past two months, less than the past two months, 1700 earthquakes. The past 34 days, 713 earthquakes. Point being, the past month, we've seen more earthquakes than some years. And the clusters don't seem to be calming down. It seems to be getting more intense. And then I did a little bit more digging. And I'm going to show you this recent swarm here. This is just since, like, I think uh, August 3rd or 5th. Let me pull it. Yep, August 3rd. You can see right here. Look at this swarm. This is pretty intense. See the area close to the Montana border there in Wyoming. Then this is showing just a real quick previous records discuss, um, that are going to show you the eruption dates about 2.1 million years ago, 1.3, and then about 640,000 years ago. The amount of mass, land mass, that was covered to an extent. And then you see Mount St. Helens ash. Really not a big deal in some areas of the world. And not nearly as intense. Now, the amount of uh, magma and lava and molten rock elements that could go with a volca uh, volcanic eruption out there in Yellowstone could be quite catastrophic. And then I even, I'm going to share with you here some simulated thickness results from a month-long Yellowstone eruption based on previous data. You can see some different figures here. The maps are going to show you. Let me zoom in on this a little bit, if I can here. Nanu, nanu, nanu. Okay. No umbrella cloud. You see the entire country is still almost covered. Texas and parts of the West Coast fare out okay in Florida. There's a week simulation, a three-day simulation. But look at the amount of thickness in millimeters, I'm pretty sure. Here, let me. It certainly is in inches. Yeah, millimeters. So Albuquerque, Atlanta, Austin. You know, Austin doesn't get much at all. And places you really need to keep an eye out for, like Billings, Casper, Missoula, Rapid City, Salt Lake City even. Hmm, interesting. Now, Salt Lake City, you know, the, the government, Big Brothers, put a ton of money into that city with the NSA facilities out there in downtown Salt Lake. I think Salt Lake City is going to be fine. I think Rapid City is going to be fine. But you can see they are going to get, according to these records or these forecasts, I should say. Now, keep in mind, also, they'll probably do a lot of weather manipulation where they will control the jet stream and manipulate the jet stream, the wind patterns, etc., to cause certain areas to get it worse than others. So... Now, there you go. Now, let's take a look at this. This is a map that shows tornadoes and nuclear power facilities, some of the more, I guess you could say, danger areas where there are more tornadoes, etc. Notice how these nuclear facilities are in some hot zones, right? Well, you'll also notice that the area around Idaho and Montana and Wyoming there there's not a whole lot of tornado activity, and also you don't see any nuclear reactors out there. Now, I do know in Idaho they've got some experimental reactors, and I think there's something in Colorado, too. I don't know why it's not showing. There's a few reactors that this is not showing. But with that being said, it also kind of puts into perspective that around the – let's, let's pull this up again. Around the major blast zone here, there aren't – there isn't a whole lot of nuclear facilities around here. So it's like, even though they were building them next to fault lines, next to tornado alleys, next to coasts, they didn't build anything around this possible Armageddon zone. <laughs> so I want to leave it at that. Hopefully things will be just fine, but you definitely want to pay attention to what's going on right now, especially if you're in the area, so you can get out of that danger zone as fast as possible. If need be, hopefully things will be just fine. Thank you for being here with me. Also, want to let you know about this quick bivy. These things are literally 
They fit in the palm of your hand. They're light. They're cheap. And they can help save your life if you ever get in a situation where you need to stay warm. You can put one in your glove box, in your bug out bag, in your backpack, underneath your car seat, underneath, um, I don't know, whatever. You could put it just about anywhere. They're, they're pretty small. So bingo. Check it out. Quick bivy. I'll leave the link in the video description box. Also, go to leakproject.com if you haven't already. Subscribe, become a member today at youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Look at that. We just look at it. 713 earthquakes over the past 34 days. Now let's see what we've had here just over the past three weeks. 500 earthquakes, 526 earthquakes in the past three weeks. 11 days. 251 earthquakes, 25 earthquakes a day almost, 23 actually, approximately 22.3. So what do we have here the past week? Let's see if we just pull up the past seven days here. 207 earthquakes the past seven days. That's quite the swarm times that by 52. Yeah, you got about, what, 10,400 plus the seven, so 10,750 approximately, a little bit more than that, some change. That's a lot of earthquakes. Hopefully this swarm will slow down. Be the change you want to see. And remember. Nanu, 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 nanu.